IR effort with JPL, uh, specifically with Blake and uh, Robert Carban and Steve Cornford. Uh, I want to take this opportunity to thank those guys. Uh, their the insights that they provided into you know digital engineering workflows at JPL and, and in general, and uh, and the Open MBE system have uh, have really been invaluable and. They had a huge influence on the high-level design of the new features that we developed uh, in Sidera Satellite and the ones that we, we plan to add in the future. Uh, they also provided a lot of technical support regarding the uh, development of our Sidera Satellite MDK, uh, which uh, implements this connection between our cloud-based platform and OpenMBEE. Uh, so what I'll show you today is a uh, uh, demonstration using the prototype instance of this uh, you know, MBSC integration enabled Sierra satellite that we developed in this phase one effort. And this, uh, this, this initial prototype focuses on supporting a single source of truth use case that leverages OpenMBEE's MMS repository and view editor uh, tool. So uh, before we get into the demo, I'll give you a, a quick introduction to our, our product, the, the kind of flagship product that we're developing at Sidero Technologies, uh, Sidero Satellite. Uh, so as all of you know, I'm sure designing a successful satellite mission involves many disparate but closely connected design elements and associated disciplines. Uh, some of these, uh, the ones that we're addressing with Sidero Satellite are shown in this, in this diagram. Uh, so these extend far beyond the spacecraft hardware itself. Uh, the orbit defines the dynamics of the satellite, the position dynamics of the satellite. Uh, the mission architecture includes other spacecraft that might be involved in the mission, ground stations, uh, and any regions or locations, whether on Earth or in space, uh, to be observed by the satellite. And operations here refers to, uh, refers to plans for the on-orbit behavior of the spacecraft hardware. Uh, and these can be implemented or uh, kind of executed e either, you know, in the flight software in the form of autonomy or they can drive, uh, you know, commanding of the spacecraft um, that, that kind of executes that, that desired behavior. And, and, then, and then those, those plans, those operations plans uh, drive the state of the spacecraft hardware at each moment in time, which obviously informs uh, you know, many pieces of the of the design and analysis process, and isn't typically something in traditional tools that's that's often folded directly in to the uh, the simulations. Um, and and by the state of the hardware, I mean you know the pointing, the operation of the payload and the subsystems, and then the exchange of information with other elements of the mission architecture that I mentioned. Uh, and then we have the environment. So the environment includes residual atmosphere and radiation, magnetic, and gravitational fields, which impact, among other things, the dynamics of the satellite, uh, the temperatures, and the electronics reliability of the satellite. And then finally, we have reliability. Uh, so I think you all know that satellites are expensive and time-consuming to develop and deploy. So this is always an important part of uh, an important factor to consider throughout the, the project life cycle. So our goal with Sidera Satellite is to address all of these disparate but closely connected elements of satellite engineering in a single integrated platform uh, that's composed of task-specific modules and structured to automate the exchange of engineering data between the modules uh, for rapid and concurrent engineering. So Sidera Satellite is cloud-based uh, and will be accessible using any standard web browser at satellite.sidero.com. Uh, we've developed Sidera Satellite from the ground up to leverage the collaborative potential, flexibility, and power of cloud computing and web application architectures. Uh, so now a little bit more on the status of, of the, uh, the product. Uh, the mission designer module, which addresses orbit pointing and conops, is completed. You can see some views here on the left. And that's the module in Sidero Satellite that we'll be working with today. Uh, it will be released and uh, available for users to license and, and start using in Q1 of 2021. Uh, so in uh, late March is our specific target. Uh, next up in our roadmap are 
energy balance, attitude control, link budget, and thermal modules. We prioritize these modules for near-term development because they'll, they're, they're useful to, to nearly any satellite design team and will really round out uh, the, uh, the capabilities of the platform and start leveraging its integrated nature. Uh, and we will continue developing and deploying modules to the platform, uh, completing these additional ones in our current roadmap, and then, and then continuing indefinitely to add scope and, and capability to Sidero Satellite. Uh, so now we'll get into the demo. Uh, the, the focus of the demo will be the preliminary design of a 3U uh, CubeSat mission, and it will involve three user stories. Uh, user one is the systems architect. So the systems architect works in Cameo Systems Modeler, CSM, to build a SysML model of the mission, and as he's doing that, he incorporates blocks from the SSB package. Uh, the SSB package is the Sidero Satellite block package. Uh, so this is a SysML package that we would provide to all users of this, uh, this feature set in Sidero Satellite to expose value properties to Sidero Satellite. So uh, you'll see a, you know, an actual uh, BDD later on that incorporates those for this mission. Um, but you know, those kind of establish the connection between the, uh, the user SysML model and, uh, and the data that lives in MMS and that uh, is cross-referenced in Sidero Satellite and, and other places throughout this, this, uh, this engineering system. The user two is the mission design engineer. And this engineer works in Sidero Satellite to develop a model of their spacecraft and their mission, uh, simulate it, and refine the mission design. And then the documentation lead uh, who we assume has some uh, leadership role in the prelim preliminary design effort, works in OpenMBEE's uh, web-based documentation tool, View Editor, to create shared documentation that incorporates design information and simulation results from Sierra Satellite. And over here on the right, you can see a diagram of the kind of flow of information uh, throughout this system. Uh, the systems architect works on their PC in CSM, and that uh, application exchanges information with TWC, the Nomadics Teamwork Cloud, and uh, and then with uh, and then that goes to MMS in uh, the OpenMBEE repository for the engineering data. Uh, the mission design engineer works in their web browser in Sidero Satellite, which is uh, running all the simulations in the cloud and storing all the the data in the cloud already, and exchanges that using its uh, the REST API with. OpenMB's MMS uh, repository. And then the documentation lead, as I mentioned before, works in, in View Editor and their web browser, uh, develops this documentation, and that documentation can cross-reference any of the data from uh, the SysML and CSM or from uh, Sidero Satellite uh, in their documents. So now I will move over to our, our View Editor document and give you an introduction to the mission and, uh, and, and, and show you, you know, at a, at a high level everything that's included here. And so the Fire, Firefly is a 3U CubeSat mission to study terrestrial gamma ray flashes, their link to light, lightning, and their effect on the ionosphere. Uh, this was an actual 3U CubeSat mission. Uh, we've, we've, uh, we've taken significant creative liberties here, but uh, it's useful to base this on an actual, actual project. Uh, so in the introduction here, we can see a, a couple relevant figures. Uh, this one is a, a global map of lightning strike density, and uh, this is useful because it informs some of the some of the design. Uh, it, it indicates that the lightning strikes are focused in the mid and low latitudes, so uh, that informs you know when we enter science mode and, and start looking for those lightning strikes. So uh, in this case, we choose to do it between uh, negative 40 and 40 degrees latitude. And that, that gets modeled in our, in our uh, CONOPS logic. And then we have this rendering of the spacecraft itself. Uh, you'll see the CAD model associated with this rendering um, in Sidera Satellite, you know, following the, the pointing and the orbit uh, that, uh, that we design, and, uh, and throughout this document where we, we use it to define key body frame vectors uh, that, that drive pointing modes. So first we have a section on the system model. So this is where we see the work of the systems architect in CSM. 
Uh, this diagram shows the Firefly mission BDD, and you can see that uh, the systems architect has uh, uh, implemented or integrated at the SSBs, the Sidera satellite blocks from our package into their SysML model. Uh, we have uh, satellite body frame vectors here, uh, the orbit of our satellite, our ground station location, uh, the sun, which obviously is, is involved in the in the Sidera satellite modeling, and the orbit of our crosslink satellite, which is the ISS. And we can also see their IVD. The remaining sections uh, that we can see in the navigation pane on the left here uh, cover key elements of this preliminary design effort. So we have orbit and time, targets, pointing, and concept of operations. And under each of those sections, we have subsections for inputs and requirements, design and modeling, and simulation results and analysis. So we'll jump to the inputs and requirements section under orbit and time. Uh, in each of these sections, uh, we capture you know, the inputs and requirements, like inputs to this preliminary design process and any constraints that will inform our design and modeling sections. Uh, in, this, in this case, we have uh, a description of two launch opportunities which drive our orbit design. Uh, one is an 800-kilometer polar circular orbit, and the other launch opportunity offers a 600-kilometer inclined orbit with an uh, a optional or flexible inclination range between 60 and 70 degrees. And then the design and modeling sections is where we see these connections to the shared engineering data that's stored in the MMS repository in OpenMBEE. Uh, you can see these asterisks and footnotes for any parameters that are currently linked uh, as we continue to develop this capability and, and, and kind of bring it to a completed product. Uh, we would have a, the co comprehensive connection between Sidera satellite and, uh, and the information in MMS and, and potentially linked in this document. Uh, but for now, there's a, there's a slightly limited scope, um, but it does cover all of the orbit and time information. So uh, if we look at these initial orbital elements that define the orbit of Firefly. We can go in here and actually edit values uh, that are cross-referenced via MMS with uh, values that are in the SysML model and values that are in Sidera satellite. So we can change the semi-major axis of the orbit and pull those updates into SysML, uh, CSM or Sidera satellite. And we have uh, these simulations, simulation results and analysis sections uh, where we have plots of simulation results from Sidera Satellite. So these, you'll see similar, you know, the, the same plots in Sidera Satellite, and, uh, and we can uh, stage them from Sidera Satellite, push them to MMS, and, uh, and then pull those updates at any time into this document by just refreshing the page. So we have orbit results under targets. We have our uh, Wallops Flight Facility ground station and our crosslink satellite. So we're assuming we have a, a store and forward payload on the ISS to get down uh, science data. And then under design and modeling, we have these linked parameters describing the location of the ground station, the orbit of our crosslink satellite, and simulation results from Sidera satellite. Under pointing, we define the key body frame vectors. Uh, for, for the satellite as they'll drive uh, the pointing modes that we define and therefore the, the attitude time series that comes out of our simulation. And we define our pointing modes. So we have uh, science, ground station comms, crosslink, idle sunlight, and idle eclipse pointing modes. And then under design and modeling, the uh, parameters that will actually uh, kind of implement those pointing modes and, uh, and could in the future be connected into their satellite. And uh, uh, inertial attitude quaternions uh, from our simulation. And then the final section is concept of operations. So we have uh, five operational modes. Those map one to one with the pointing modes that we defined. Uh, we have modes for ground station comms, science, crosslink, idle sunlight, and idle eclipse. And uh, and then we have these performance requirements here, which are important and will we'll come up later in the demo. Uh, we have a require we have requirements that we spend at least 46% of the uh, simulation or the mission in science mode, 13% in crosslink or ground stations, ground station comms modes, 
and 25% in idle sunlight. So uh, the idea is that we, we, we need this fraction of the mission spent in science to generate sufficient you know, science data and this percentage in a communications mode to downlink all of that science data and this percent percentage in idle sunlight where we point to maximize power generation so that we have sufficient energy balance margin. And then we have the uh, conditions and uh, ranking or prioritization of operational modes that is used to implement the desired logic uh, that's described in the previous section and actually simulate the uh, operational mode logic of, of the satellite and of the operational plans. And we have simulation results and analysis. So CONOPS logic, a time series plot, and a pie chart showing the operational mode distribution uh, for, uh, for the uh, simulation. Okay, so now um, we will move over to Sidera Satellite and, and introduce you to the, the features that we have there. So when you when you go to the the web address for Sidera Satellite, you're taken to this login page. Um, there's a quick uh, sign up process uh, for new users, and when we log in, we're taken to the dashboard. Uh, so the dashboard includes this Mission Explorer widget, and this is where this is essentially the file system for Sidera Satellite. We can select a mission, and then we're shown all the mission versions that we have. Uh, we have created for that mission. And uh, now I'll show you how we can create a new mission that's linked to OpenMBEE's MMS repository. Uh, so we'll just call this one test eight. Off the version description, and then we'll log into our MMS instance. So we provide the URL of this MMS, or sorry, OpenMBEE instance. Um, uh, I guess it is actually the MMS instance, and then we provide our log informa login information. Now we're logged in, we can select our org. In this case, it's the Sidero org, and our project, which is a Sidero evaluation. Now once we do that, we have a new mission version for the Firefly uh, modeling effort, and it's connected to that uh, MMS instance, and that, that project in MMS. Uh, and it's already pulled the, uh, the, the information, the relevant information from MMS, uh, so we can go in and start working with it. When we select a mission version, all of the modules, the, those modules I discussed before in our roadmap that are available uh, to this user that they have a license for uh, will appear in this navigation pane on the left. Right now, we, we just have mission designer here, so we'll open that. And we're taken to uh, one of the edit, or the edit board for mission designer. We can see in the orbit and time section here, we'll start showing this side by side with the view editor document. We can see that the baseline orbit design has been pulled in uh, from MMS. So we have this semi-major axis, which corresponds to a, a 900 kilometer altitude or 800 kilometer altitude. Um, it's a circular orbit and the inclination is 90 degrees. So our baseline design is that that first uh, launch opportunity, uh, the 800 kilometer polar circular orbit. Uh, under targets, we can also see that our, our targets were pulled in. So uh, our NASA Wallops ground station here with its location, the sun, and the ISS with its orbit defined. I, throughout Sidera satellite in the edit boards, we have responsive guidance, which provides uh, context on you know, how each uh, input that they're interacting with informs the modeling and simulation of the mission and uh, best practices on that particular element of the, the design. Uh, so for example, if we wanted to define the orbit using position and velocity instead of initial orbital elements, uh, we can interact with these various boxes and it gives us some information about how that information is used. Uh, we could also use a reference orbit and uh, once we go to select a reference orbit, the guidance tells us about each orbit type and what it's commonly used for, so more best practices on, on the design. And, uh, you know, if we wanted a sun-synchronous circular, it would give us information about, um, that might inform how we define those parameters and let us know which ones 
you know, potentially aren't important uh, to, to dial in uh, based on how mature your, your design is. But we'll leave the ISS where it is. Uh, and the remaining sections uh, for defining the pointing and the CONOPS uh, logic and operational modes, uh, those sections are not currently linked in this prototype. You know, uh, phase one developed uh, instance of, of Sidera satellite, uh, but will be in the future. Although we do have the body frame vectors tied in, as you saw in the BDD. So if we went to define a pointing mode, we would have to open the spacecraft dialog to select uh, body frame vectors of the satellite. And you can see that those have been pulled into the payload board site, the max power generation uh, direction, min drag, and the max antenna gain. Uh, so I'd like to do one more, uh, well, actually, uh, we're going to switch over to a pre-built uh, version of this mission uh, so that we, in the interest of time, so we don't have to go through and build out all of these sections manually. So if we go back to our dashboard and Mission Explorer, we can load this pre-built demo that has those remaining sections already built out. So here we can see that the pointing modes uh, have been implemented the conditions that drive our CONOPS logic, so latitude limits that kind of tie us, uh, our science mode to that uh, low and mid-latitude region between negative 40 and 40 degrees, uh, elevation from our ground station to establish that link, uh, line of sight to our cross-link satellite, and then a sunlight condition. And those are tied to the various operational modes that we have defined here uh, and uh, using this interface. And uh, pointing mode is also tied to each operational mode. So this is uh, completely built out. We've simulated it, and uh, we can see the simulation results here. Uh, so this is the playback board in our analyze uh, section. Uh, we can see our CAD model integrated into the playback here, our key body frame vectors labeled, uh, our Wallops ground station marked, and the ISS is actually coincident with our satellite right now, but. Uh, we can see it once we start playing back. Uh, we also have our CONOPS logic shown over here on the right, um, giving us the current status of all of the logical elements that build up that, that CONOPS logic and automate the changing uh, between operational modes. And we can see the attitude changing in response to, to those changes in operational mode. So here we're in science mode, we're pointing nadir in those mid and low latitudes. You can also see the ISS. And, um, and when there's a cross-link opportunity, uh, you'll probably see the, the satellite pointing, our satellite pointing to the ISS. And then we have time series plots that you saw integrated into the view editor documentation for orbit, attitude, uh, targets, our CONOPS. So this shows the, uh, indicates the active operational mode at each time step in the simulation and also displays the status of any conditions and and then the total status of each operational mode, whether it's a, it's possible to go into that mode at any one time. And under statistics, we have statistics on our targets and our CONOPS, including this pie chart that we saw in the documentation. Uh, I quickly want to show how we can add a new linked artifact into our view editor documentation from uh, one that's from Stero Satellite. So currently, uh, as I mentioned before, we have the inertial attitude quaternions, the ones that take us from the J2K ECI frame to the satellite body frame. Uh, and I will uh, quickly add an additional plot, uh, this Earth fixed attitude into our view editor documentation. Let's go down to the pointing section here to the simulation results. Um, we'll enable editing, edit this section here, and insert a cross-reference. And we'll just search Earth Fixed Attitude. And we can see the available artifacts that have Earth Fixed Attitude in them. Uh, so here's the Earth Fixed Attitude, select that, save the section, 
and it's integrated into our shared documentation now. So that would be a way for, for me right now as the mission design engineer to uh, share some additional results and, and incorporate them into the shared documentation. So now we'll move back to the role of the documentation lead and uh, uh, check our performance against those CONOPS requirements that I mentioned earlier. Uh, so the requirements indicate that we need to spend 46% of the mission in science, 13% in one of these communications modes, and 25% in sunlight, idle sunlight mode. Uh, it looks like we're spending about 9.6% 9, 9 in one of the communications modes, so we're not meeting that 13% requirement. Uh, we're spending 42.8% in science, and so we're not meeting this 46% requirement. And we're spending almost 40% in idle sunlight, uh, so we probably have plenty of energy balance margin. Uh, but we need to adjust the designs so that we can try and meet these, these first two requirements here. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have other the other launch opportunity, uh, a, a lower inclination than our baseline orbit. And so we will uh, turn that knob uh, as the this documentation lead and and try out a different orbit. So the other opportunity is a 600 kilometer altitude. So that would be 6,978 kilometer semi-major axis. We can save that change, and then we can change the inclination uh, to something in that optional range between 60 and 70 degrees. So we'll start with 60 degrees. Uh, so now that we've saved those changes, they're in MMS, and we can pull them into Sidera satellite and re-simulate the mission. So the way we do that is we go home, <clears throat> we pull from MMS, and you can see now our simulation is indicated as out of date. And so we need to re-simulate here. You can see that that updated orbit is reflected here. And while that's simulating, we'll adjust our view so that we can check against requirements once we can see those uh, simulation results. We can see in the playback that our orbit is now, you know, on that lower inclination. We're getting more uh, crosslinks, it looks like, with ISS being in a more similar orbit. And, uh, and we're operating more often in science mode, spending more time in those mid and low latitudes. And that should be reflected in the uh, CONOP statistics here. So now we're spending about uh, 50, almost 15% in communications modes. Check that against our requirements, so we're meeting that requirement. Uh, we're spending 48.6% in science, that meets our science requirement. Uh, however, we're only spending 24.6% in idle sunlight, so we're a little low there. Um, so we will go, uh, go ahead and tweak the inclination slightly back up uh, to try and optimize the orbit design. And then we'll re-simulate. And as I mentioned before, uh, all of the kind of data storage and all of the simulation capabilities in the cloud. Uh, so you know we we expect users as their design matures to simulate their entire entire missions in Sierra Satellite and leverage uh, the parallelization and, and cloud computing that we have access to. Okay, so that that's finished. We'll head back to the statistics results and and see if we met our requirements. So now we're at 25.6% in idle sunlight, so we're meeting that requirement, and, uh, and we're spending about 14.4% in communications modes and 48.6% in science. So uh, we think we're, we're meeting the requirements. We'll push them back to the documentation 
and to the documentation lead to, to verify that we're meeting our, our performance requirements. We'll stage the artifact, and that stages it for export to MMS. And we'll go back to our dashboard, commit this change, say that we updated orbit design to meet ConOps requirements. So now it's committed to MMS. We'll refresh the page. See that our orbit has been changed again uh, by the mission design engineer. And uh, verify that we are uh, meeting our ConOps requirements. Uh, so that, that concludes the demo. Uh, I hope that uh, that I've, you know, shown you shown you the the prototype that we've developed and and demonstrated the utility of, of this integration with OpenMBEE and uh, and really the, the the power of that to 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 enable these uh, collaborative workflows for satellite engineering.